Bahrain is noted as having the most free economy in the Middle East, in the Arab world. Can you talk about exactly what that means? Um, well, it, it um, goes hand in hand. Um, when um, His Majesty the King led the political reform um, 10 years ago, and we have our elected parliament and, 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 and all of that, um, there was a simple mandate that democracy must be better for people. People must feel an economic dividend with these political freedoms. And therefore, you must adopt best business practices. So lowering of duties, cutting red tape, uh, and, and simplifying procedures, strengthening the rule of law. Um, these are the things we've done in Bahrain. And uh, as you've said, uh, is reflected on our international rankings of of economic freedoms and things like that. Have you really seen the consequences of those sorts of reforms? In other words, has this worked? Uh, absolutely. Um, uh, growth in Bahrain over the past decade um, has been about 6.2 percent, the average, including in 2009, where we had, which was one of arguably the worst years in global uh, economic history, uh, we had positive growth of 3 percent. Um, so we've had a, a good, strong decade, low inflation, um, real wages grew by a third. Uh, I believe it is in real terms. Wages grew in real terms by a third. Um, uh, exports um, have, have doubled in the variety. So oil now is only a third of our exports. used to be two-thirds at the beginning of the decade. So the diversification of the economy. We have today the most diversified economy in the Gulf. Switching back to the region overall, we've seen, I guess, kind of gentle revolutions, if you will. And there obviously was violence and loss of life, in, but, but still, relatively speaking, gentle in Tunisia and in Egypt. Um, is there the notion that this will continue to spread in the Arab world? Um, I think um, I'm not, uh, I would be surprised if it, you know, I'm, I'm not a believer of the domino effect. Mm -hmm. um, uh, having said that, it obviously impacts uh, the region. Um, each country has its own unique set of circumstances. Even if you look at Tunisia versus Egypt, Tunisia was one of the more successful economically countries. Um, so the, region, the reasons of, of uh, the uprising in Tunisia were different than Egypt. So I think each country has its own uh, unique set of circumstances. Um, uh, and but, but what the message is, is if you don't work to improve the quality of life of your people, you will have troubles. What is the key to peace, stability, and growth in, in the Gulf? Um, well, it is, you know, this balance between economics and security, what comes first? Um, and for the longest time, security has always um, been at the forefront, and the economy has come second. I think these recent crises in, in the Arab world between Tunisia and Egypt um, have sent a message that actually the economy should be given more weight. Um, and, as, and as long as we work to improve uh, people's lives, I think we will, and, and um, economic prosperity continues to reach all parts of society, I think uh, it will um, ensure that we will have um, uh, peace for a long time to come.